Now it's recording. Can, I just need you to speak like really loud for me if you can, because I'm not sure how the echo will be. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. reasonably right. loud. Yeah. <laughs> so can you uh, tell me your name? Gordon Clark. And uh, where are we? We're in Shrewsbury Friends Meeting House, Quakers. Uh, and, good. and I'm a member of uh, Shrewsbury Meeting. The Shrewsbury meeting has a long established 350 year history. Since 1665, friends have held meeting at Shrewsbury since the founding of the settlements in the area by groups out of Long Island and Rhode Island as they moved south. Shre Quakers uh, settled Shrewsbury. They were the dominant group that came in. They weren't all Quakers. Uh, prior to that, there were only a few uh, Scandinavian people living in spotted areas around. But once uh, England took Manhattan away from the Dutch in 1664, uh, the following year the Quakers came and moved into and settled this area. They negotiated with the Indians to buy the property and had it uh, affirmed by the governor of New York, who at the time was uh, Nichols was the name, and he. Uh, he affirmed the purchase by the Quakers. Shrewsbury Meeting is both New Jersey's oldest and longest running Quaker meeting, with the first meeting house built in 1672. That same year, George Fox, the founder of Quakerism, visited the colonies from England and toured the original meeting house in nearby Little Silver as one of his stops. Uh, this particular building was built in 1816, and it is probably our third meeting house. Our first one was built in uh, 1672, near here, over in uh, Little Silver. Um, when this one was built, it was built in the form of two cells, which was built to accommodate uh, a separate meeting for business for women and men. According to the Ann Arbor Friends Meeting of Ann Arbor, Michigan, the monthly meeting for business is the central means for making decisions, translating concerns into actions, and considering matters relating to the organization of the meeting and its program and activities as an ongoing religious group. The Shrewsbury meeting was built with two rooms or cells to accommodate two separate meetings for business. This section we're in right now is almost as original, uh, the, uh, except for there would have been no carpeting on the floors, there would have been no cushions on the seats. The other side has been changed. We had fire over here in 1968, uh, which partially destroyed this. This has been changed, but at one time, this was identical to this. And that was to accommodate a separate meeting for business for women over here and men over here. So uh, as, the, as the building was used at that time, uh, the idea was to provide a separate space for meeting for women to have their meeting for business because the tenor of the whole community was, uh, was for women to not have the same rights that men had. And they couldn't speak up in public or at public meetings. And that attitude spilled over into meetings, so women were not participating in the life of the meeting. So they, they attempted to accommodate that by making a separate space for women. Uh, to meet for their business and then to meet for their business. Uh, a little narrative I like to, I've made up <laughs> that I like to tell is that uh, at some point when they were meeting in a single cell meeting house, just one side, the women weren't able to speak and they went to the men and said, we don't get a chance to talk about anything we need to talk about. We need to, need to make decisions uh, about what were at the time and still are to a lot of people women's issues. And uh, so the women, what they did was they put up a drape across a part of the, of the room and provided a space for women to meet separately. Ultimately, they built two cells to provide for women to meet separately. Um, and they began meeting that way and conducting their business. Uh, women learned to speak out and become uh, more involved in the life of the meeting in that way. And gradually some of the issues they were dealing with overlapped with the issues that men were dealing with. So they would send notes back and forth. 
like a bicameral legislature to try and resolve differences and issues between them. And uh, eventually, they would send representatives over. Some of the women felt more confident. They would come and explain to the men why they needed something done. And the men would send representatives over to them. And at some point, somebody said, um, why don't we just get together and talk about it? And so they began meeting together, and it was no longer a reason for two separate cells. Yeah, um, the, the early history, uh, in, in the, originally in the colonies, the women had more rights than they did once the nation formed. Um, women were not permitted to speak in public. And if a woman wanted an issue dealt with, she had to ask her husband to bring it up, or her father. Uh, so they didn't speak up. And that became an issue in the meeting because Quakers had always believed inequality of men and women. Uh, famous, Quakers were famous for their uh, testimony to equality. It also was equality between the races. And they tried to maintain that. But it became an issue in the meeting because, me, because women would not speak up. So women tried to make a little separate area where they could speak and, uh, and be heard. Out of this, I might mention, came some very great women leaders like uh, Susan B. Anthony and Lucretia Mott, who became leaders in the women's rights movement in the country and uh, went around the country preaching for women's rights. Just that other point that's of interest. Uh, the shingles on the outside of this building, which were replacing at this time, uh, were mined cedar shingles, which means uh, well, at the time, there wasn't much lumber still growing. The whole Northeast had been stripped of lumber. So getting materials was a problem. So out of the swamps in South Jersey, they mined 30,000-year-old cedar trees that were not petrified. They were preserved by the acidity of the water. Huh. And they would dig them out of the swamps, take them out, cut them up, make shingles out of them and they put them on this meeting house and lots of other buildings in the colonial period. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. About out of time for ministry and council. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, thank you very much, thank you.